What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're talking about three absolute essential things that you need to understand when buying an RTX 3060, 3070, or 3080 gaming laptop. Briefly, they are, what is a MUX switch and how does it enable higher levels of performance when you bypass Nvidia Optimus? Number two, what is the TDP or thermal design power of your CPU and GPU in your laptop and how do you find that out? And number three, what gaming display should you get in your 2021 gaming laptop? Because that can make or break your gaming experience. So what is a MUX switch? A MUX switch allows a laptop to bypass Nvidia Optimus, which can bottleneck CPU bound games especially, but even GPU bound games will see a slight performance impact. Now many laptops this year are coming with a MUX switch, or NVIDIA Optimus. Those are the two primary choices. Now, some laptops just forego Optimus and a MUX switch by just direct connecting the NVIDIA GPU directly to the display. Now, in my testing of the Strix G17, I saw about a 30% performance impact in eSports titles and about a 7% performance impact in GPU-bound games like Cyberpunk 2077. Now, NVIDIA Optimus allows you to have increased battery life by switching between the integrated GPU and the dedicated GPU, but in order to do this, it has to route the video signal through the integrated GPU in the CPU, which causes a CPU bottleneck and can reduce CPU performance. Now, I'm not going to go into a full performance analysis of NVIDIA Optimus on versus off. I made a dedicated video about that for this Strix G17, which I'll link down below. But I will say that even though this laptop has a max Q GPU in the GS66, most games this thing uses 80 watts, and in most games this uses 130 watts. But in eSports titles, this laptop still beats this laptop in games like CSGO, Rainbow Six Siege, and Fortnite. So if you're a competitive eSports gamer, know that getting a MUX switch is more important than the TDP of the laptop. So what this means is that if you're an eSports gamer, your priority should not be whether or not it has the maximum TDP. You should first look into whether or not it has a MUX switch. And once you know that Nvidia Optimus is bypassed, then you'll know that you can get the maximum possible performance. Now, that said, not everyone really needs to worry about having a MUX switch in their laptop. So how do you know whether a laptop you want to buy comes with Optimus or a MUX switch? Well, I've tried to make it as easy as possible because manufacturers kind of hide whether or not it comes with it, which it doesn't make sense. Like if it comes with a MUX switch, why is that not one of the top features on the specs page, right? In the meantime, I've tried my best to add whether or not a laptop has a MUX switch or Nvidia Optimus on my spreadsheet that I've made. I've tried my best to make it as detailed and thorough as possible in order to help you pick what laptop is best for you. There's a link in the video description down below to that spreadsheet if you want to check it out. If you're a casual gamer that primarily plays GPU bound games like Cyberpunk 2077, Red Dead Redemption, then the TDP of the laptop and CPU matter much more than whether or not it has a MUX switch. And this brings us into TDP. What is it? How does it affect your laptop? The TDP or thermal design power is a lot like pressing the gas pedal in a car. Imagine if you had like a wooden block behind the gas pedal and you could only press it halfway down. That is exactly what a max Q GPU basically is. If you can't press the gas all the way down, you'll never get up to top speed on the clock speed. Now the GS66 I have on my right here clocks up to 95 watts of power, while the Strix G17 can go up to 100 130 watts of power. So just think that the Strix G17 has that gas pedal pressed further down on the same engine, therefore getting up to a higher overall clock speed. This difference in TDP is gonna be very prominent in games where the GPU is front and center. And when you play at higher resolutions like QHD or 4K, you will see much more GPU bound performance and that's when TDP becomes much more important. Now I see comments on my videos all the time saying max Q is just a scam and I really don't think lower TDP max Q laptops are a scam because there are lots of people that want to have 
have high performance in a really thin and light package like the GS66. They don't want to carry around a 17 inch. The key in my opinion for a good Max-Q design laptop is that it is a truly thin and light and extra portable machine when compared to a Max P system. Ultimately, whether or not you go with a Max Q laptop or a Max P laptop primarily depends on what you need in a laptop. And I can absolutely recommend lower TDP laptops if it fits your situation. Like if you're walking around a college campus for 12 hours a day, you'll probably want to shed every pound of weight in your backpack as possible. Having something that is thin and light and portable is amazing and essential for some people out there. And you can get very close to the same level of performance, especially Especially if you get a Max-Q laptop with a MUX switch because you get that extra bit of performance because of the MUX and it kind of helps counterweight the fact that it's a Max-Q GPU. But the key thing to keep in mind for TDP is the size of the laptop versus the TDP of the machine. You just want a good ratio of laptop size versus TDP. In my book, there are two types of buyers out there. You got people that want to go for thicker machines that have the best performance for the money. And then you have people out there that want to go for thinner, lighter machines that are the best performance for the pound of carry weight. So you'll have to decide as a consumer which camp you're in, the Max P department or the Max Q department, and then buy your laptops accordingly. Knowing what TDP a laptop will come with is actually more confusing than ever this year because NVIDIA Dynamic Boost 2.0 can really add a wide range of boost and clock speeds on a laptop CPU and GPU depending on the workload. Now I've tried to make this as easy as possible on my spreadsheet and add the TDP whenever possible, but until we get good reviews of all of the laptops or until all the manufacturers fully disclose them like Nvidia is now asking them to, we will not know for sure. So again, link in the description down below to that spreadsheet and I hope you find it helpful. Now on to number three. What display should you get in your gaming laptop in 2021? Now this is crucial because this is the widest range of display quality and variants we have ever seen in the gaming laptop market. You have 60 hertz, really crappy full HD displays on super budget models, and you have all the way up to QHD 165 hertz, 100% Adobe RGB, and 4K 120 hertz, 100% Adobe RGB displays on the other side of the spectrum. So what are the key things to look at when you're buying a display? First of all, and most importantly, is what resolution do you need? Do you want a 1080p display, a QHD display, or a 4K display? Now, on a 15-inch model like the GS66 or lower, I think a 1080p display is enough, but I would love a QHD 165Hz as the optimal display. Now, there are a few different stats to pay attention to when buying a display. You want a high nits brightness. Above 300 is a good baseline to start with. 350 is really good. Above 400 is exceptional. Above 500 is like insane, okay? Now, when it comes to color gamut, for most gamers, I think they'll be happy with 94% sRGB or higher. And if you're a content creator, you ideally wanna shoot for 100% Adobe RGB. The more you play competitive multiplayer titles like Overwatch, CSGO, Valorant, the more you'll probably wanna go for a 300 hertz or 360 hertz full HD display. But if you're more of a casual gamer, then I would say to prioritize higher resolution and higher color gamut as a top priority. Now, if you're someone with a lot of cash, the best possible display is gonna be a 4K 120 hertz display. The biggest mistake I think you could make buying a display though is not getting one with a high refresh rate that has a lot of ghosting. Now, I have already done a detailed review on the Strix G17 and I'm in the process of making a detailed review on the GS66. And I will be doing a detailed performance analysis between these two laptops, so be sure to subscribe if you don't wanna miss out. So those are the three core essential things you need to know when buying a gaming laptop in 2021. I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out.